so in the last few videos we discussed about timers so this video we are going to discuss about something called counter so as you know timers we use them to measure time okay so counters they are used for generally used for counting some external events for example if you want to count how many times a button was pressed by a user or say in a tablet packing application how many tablets have been put into the bottles so these kind of events if you want to count and uh, there we can use counters so counters basically count events uh, timer it usually counts the number of clock cycles so effectively you will see the implementation details are quite similar so what i will do is i will take a example application and we will see how to design it so as i mentioned my application is like a tablet bottling application okay so i i have some bottle here and tablets will be falling from here so i need to count like how many tablets are there in the bottle once the bottle get filled i can place the next bottle so usually we will have a light source here so let's say like an led here so we'll have a light source here and we will have a light dependent resistor or some sensor will be there and let's say like whenever light falls on it the output is high if that is not falling output is low vice versa is also possible let's assume like that so if you are filling tablets like that whenever the tablet is passing uh, it will break the light beam so the output will become high so if you are keep on filling tablets you will feel like the sensor output will be something like this okay so all these pulses they might not have the same width because the exact time for each tablet may not be different okay theoretically uh, it should be all same but practically there could be some variation so the pulse widths could be different so basically uh, to know how many tablets are there we will have to count how many pulses are there so that's it so it's quite simple uh, circuit so you'll know if i want to do it i will have this sensor input coming here let's say sensor input is coming and at the output i will directly give the count if you want to reset the counter you can provide a reset signal also okay so let's go ahead and just design it. so this is our counter circuit that we are going to design uh, in this case i haven't drawn the clock signal whether we really want to use the clock or not we will come back and check for the time being i am going to directly count these pulses okay so you will see this circuit is still sequential this is sequential as of now because it will need memory new count will be old count plus one so it needs memory but this is not synchronous at this point because it's not working on any clock signal okay so let's quickly design this one and we will test it and see so give it look module counter we will have input let's call that input as i underscore even okay so again one good coding practice is when you give the input output names uh, usually put the prefix i underscore to indicate this is an input and o underscore to indicate this is an output and w underscore to indicate like this is an intermediate wire okay so that will make more sense okay so i have i event input i reset now if the signal is active low if you want to reset uh, the circuit when this signal is low we usually call it like i reset underscore n so this n is saying like this is negative logic so when this signal is low I will reset if the signal is high i will not reset okay till now we were using positive reset uh, let's use negatively reset this time okay and we have output or count how many are there now what should be the width of this one depends upon uh, what is the maximum value you want to count okay so let's put like uh, nine bits wide so that we can count from zero to 1023 Good enough and code is very simple you can write always at uh, postage i event or postage no i am using 
negative reset so we need to write neg h this time i reset underscore n i want to reset when the signal is low so we'll say if not i reset underscore n we will make this o count as zero so this should be a reg type else basically means during the post edge of the event and if there is no reset we make o count is o count plus one tick p1 so what do you feel here you will feel like this event is like a clock signal yeah right so in the previous code we were writing always at postage clock and do something here it looks exactly same instead of clock i am using this event as my clock okay so in physical implementation it will look very similar to our timer because we have return count equal to count plus one so we will need an adder so we'll have our adder here one input will be one the output of the adder will be going to a bunch of flip-flop again this we declared it as 10 bits wide so this will be 10 now the output from here will be fed back here the only difference is previously we connected clock here to the clock input so whatever is the clock of this flip-flop instead of an actual clock signal we will connect an event signal here that's it and reset as usual will come if it is negative reset maybe we have to put a not gate and connect the reset right. reset underscore n that's it so the circuit is more or less exactly same now as i mentioned before clock is also a square wave this is not a square wave it may be a rectangular wave but still there is a positive edge okay and we just want to count how many edges are there so this will do the trick so let's save it and quickly test whether it is working so counter dot v v log counter sim work dot counter so first let's supply the reset signal so we'll make it low event input that's also I'm keeping low And let's run our count value is zero. Let's remove reset. Okay. Now let's generate some event. Okay, so I will make the signal high. And you can see the count value became one and let it be high for some time then let's make it low and keep it low for a lot of time then let's make it high so you'll see the count value became two okay so just like a clock signal so this one is working fine now as i mentioned before the implementation is sequential but it is not a synchronous circuit. If your circuit is part of a bigger design, which is a synchronous one, means all of them are working on a clock signal, and only if this part is non-synchronous, okay, that will create a lot of issues. Those exact issues I am not discussing now. Maybe in a later course you will see that issues with the uh, clock domain crossing, things called setup time, hold time violation, things like that. Or I will discuss it later so basically it will cause issues so you are remaining circuit is working at some clock and this part is not working at a clock either not working at a clock or working at this even directly which looks like a clock so what we need is we need to make this synchronous one which will give us a better implementation okay so my aim is uh, I need to increment this count on a clock signal okay so here in addition to these signals we will have a clock also and I need to increment the count value based on the clock signal so if I come back here 
and if I add a clock also here so we have input I clock and if I say postage I clock or negatory is at count equal to count plus one will it solve my problem no the issue here is when I add my clock here there is no guarantee the width of this event will be exactly one clock cycle okay so it can be arbitrarily long or arbitrarily short so if it remains long if I write like this for a single event my counter will be incremented multiple times because it will remain high for more than one clock cycle so the logic won't work so what I need is I need some logic to detect the rising edge of this event okay so I need to build some circuit which will guarantee that it doesn't matter how long this pulse is it will be detected only once when I implement as a synchronous circuit so this is a uh, general case we will face at many places in digital design so the solution is always like this so suppose you have a clock signal this is a real clock and you have an arbitrary signal coming and you just want to find the rising edge of this clock or you want to generate a single pulse from this arbitrarily long pulse so let's call it uh, input so what you can do is you can pass this signal through a flip-flop so in the previous discussion we have seen if you pass a signal through a flip-flop so I will take a flip-flop I will apply this clock signal to the clock of that flip-flop and this input to D of that flip-flop and if I look at Q this will be like one clock delayed version of my input so if you apply it to a flip-flop uh, it will look something like this because here it is low it will be low here it will become high and here it will become low so this is how it will look like so let me call it input delayed okay next you take this delayed signal and pass it to a NOT gate so how it will look like so let's call it like input delayed NOT okay input delayed not it will look something like this if I ignore the propagation delay of the not gate and all ideally it will look something like this now what you do you do an AND operation between this input signal and this output you take the output of an AND gate so like input delayed AND let me call it input delayed AND so you are adding this signal with this one and see the magic that will give a single pulse right because from here to here the signal is low so if you add the output will be low it will remain high only from here to here so you will get a single pulse now if you use this pulse for counting what happens is the counter will detect this pulse is high only on this clock edge so here he will still find it as low only on this edge he will find it as high and all these are low so the counter will be incremented only one so if you want to find the rising edge of any signal this is the technique we use ideally because this input can be asynchronous that means it can change at any time ideally we need to pass it through two flip-flops so first flip-flop I will pass it like this now it became a synchronous signal then I will pass it through one more flip-flop then it will become yeah like like this then you take the negative of this guy then it will be like this then you and between this signal and this thing. so you will get a pulse actually at this location in this case it will be guaranteed the width of this pulse will be exactly one clock cycle in this case uh, because this signal can change at any time the width can be less than one clock cycle also fine but uh, today we will just use this first implementation for demonstration so what I have to do I will take my event 
first I need to delay it by one clock so I'll write it in a separate always block always at voltage I clock I will say like okay event underscore delayed to indicate it is a delayed or event and we declare it reg event underscore d and that is our i underscore event so we did that delaying one now we need to do an invert operation of this delayed one inversion of this one and that shouldn't be sequential if you use it under a clock cycle that delayed cycle that delayed signal will come one clock after we don't want it we need immediate delay so it should be a combination circuit so you can either write always at star or you can simply write here assign event underscore d n just to indicate delayed negative equal to not of event d because this is hardware implementation whether you write it here after the always block or before the always block doesn't matter the order doesn't matter because all these are parallel implementation this is representing a flip-flop this is representing a not gate but you need to declare it this time this is a wire event underscore d n okay so we have the delayed one also now we can generate this pulse by adding these two that and operation you can either do combinationally or sequentially if you do combinational you will see that pulse here if you put it in the sequential you will see this pulse after one clock cycle but both will have uh, same effect let's put it sequentially I can use the same always block or can write in a separate always block. Let's use a separate always block. Okay. For such I underscore clock. Let's call it event pulse. Okay. That is this I event and it with this one. The event pulse should be also reg type. Now here what I will do, here I will write else if event pulse, I will increment the count. So let's recompile. And restart. Or add all the signals here so that you can see them. Okay, I clock event reset. We can see everything. So this time we have a clock. So again, let's run it like uh, 100 nanosecond itself. Okay, it doesn't matter. Event, let me keep it low first. Zero, let's apply the reset. For zero. Let's run for some time. Okay, clock I didn't apply. Okay, okay. Okay, so clock is there, reset is there. Everything looks fine. Now let's remove the reset. Force one. And let's make the even signal high. So I'm making event high here. One. Even became high here. Event D became high here. Delayed one. And this is the event D negative that you can see became low here. And this event pulse. You can see there is a single pulse here. From here to here. My event is still high, but this pulse happened only once. It doesn't matter how long your event lasts, there will be a single pulse. I can make the event low, and that's fine. Then, if you make even high again, you will find like it will generate one pulse. 
So basically our counter will increment only once for a single event. So for this implementation, usually we will have to put a constraint uh, on the minimum pulse width of our input event. If your input event's pulse width is less than one clock period, uh, he will miss it. You can see if the pulse is only from here to here. When you do the delayed one, this will remain low. This pulse won't be generated. Okay, so usually we'll put a constraint like the input width should be uh, at least two clock cycle long something like that to guarantee that it will be captured if it is less than that uh, again practically also that makes sense if it is less than that that could be some noise or something a, a very short pulse that won't be de detected okay so that's about counters uh, this is again positive counter up counter you can try down counter also which starts from a larger value and counts down that is one thing and you can also design counters which are sensitive to the negative edge of the input signal. So you have the input signal here. You can think how can you find the negative edge of this input. Okay, so apply some logic so that uh, the circuit will generate a single pulse when this negative edge happens. Okay, so with this we will stop our discussion on counters. Thank you.